Good morning, people of hope. Good morning, siblings in Christ, wherever you are. Welcome to People of Hope this morning. Welcome to our worship. Welcome to another day of grace. First thing I want to assure you of is that God loves you. Your God loves you so much. It doesn't matter where you've been, what roads you've traveled, what paths you've taken to get where you are today. Your God loves you. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that you can do that can make God love you more, make God love you not less. Because God is God, and our God, your God, is a God of love. Join us as we're about to begin our worship with the singing of the first song, if you will, Here I Am to Worship. Good morning. Welcome back. I'm just noticing that I had who did the, I did the PowerPoint, and there's another two slides that did get sung by the Spirit of Joy. Regardless, it's all good. It all works. Um, again, welcome to People of Hope. We are a member missionary congregation, a church in mission. We are affiliated with the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, the ELCA. So again, welcome. Everything that you're going to need for the service this morning, as you've already noted, is on your device, whether it's your phone, your laptop, your flat your notebook, whatever device you currently have, God is with you as you're using it here with us this morning. So let's focus. Oh, and we're also going to be doing communion this morning. Don't let me forget that. So if you have elements, something that you want to use for bread, something that you'd like to use for wine, you can be gathering those things at some point in time during the service so that those are ready for you after the sermon. We'll be doing communion. And you're all welcome to join because all are welcome. All right, let's take a moment and pray. God of gods, light of lights, Lord of lords, thank you for another day of grace. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you 
for being with us in all that we think, all that we do, and all that we say. You are a most awesome God, and we're thankful that we get to experience you. Help us to embrace your grace and live the lives that we should, treating everyone, all of our siblings, as children of God, because that's who we are. Amen. Next, we're going to do our confession of sins. You know, no matter how hard we try in life, we stumble, we fall. We can't do everything that we should do, that we know is right to do. We don't help our brothers and sisters. We don't help our other siblings in Christ. We just fall short. But God knows that. And true, God forgives us, but he still likes us to take a moment once in a while. And we have people of hope do this at least weekly, on Sundays, but many of us do that during the day, where we acknowledge to God, hey, we fell short. Help us pick up the pieces and move on. So let's say together these words of our confession this morning. Forgive us, Lord, for being so unwilling to accept your love, your grace, and your joy, all of which you so freely give to each and every one of us, each and every moment of each and every day. Forgive us, God, for being too concerned about the opinions others might have of us as Christians who welcome all. Forgive us, Lord, for being selfish with the talents, the gifts, and the treasures you have so freely given us. Forgive us, God, for not believing that we are handcrafted by you and that we are gorgeous beings because you reside in us. Forgive us, Lord, for failing to respond to the needs of all of our brothers, to the needs of all of our sisters, and to the needs of our siblings of all genders. Forgive us, God, for failing to demonstrate daily that we are the living and resurrected Christ moving about this world. Forgive us, Lord, for our forgetfulness in not remembering to thank you for all of the countless blessings you bestow upon us every day. Dear God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our witness, our ultimate role model for unconditional acceptance and unconditional love, forgive us, renew us, heal us, and lead us. O oh God, help us to embrace your grace so that we may forever and ever delight in your will, walk in your ways to the never-ending glory of your holy name. Amen. My friends in Christ, your sins are forgiven. From a God who loves you so much, those sins have been taken off your shoulders. You can stand up straighter, perhaps, Walk with a little more glide to your slide. Your sins have been forgiven in the name of God the Creator, Jesus the Savior, and this Holy Spirit who is our energizing sanctifier. Smile. God loves you. You are forgiven. Our next part of the service will be our reading for, the, for that today. Our reading for today. Our text comes from the book of Acts, which could actually be called Luke 2, because it was written by Luke. But Acts 1, chapter 1, verses 1 through 26, the whole chapter. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit, to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, 
He presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, Jesus said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? Jesus replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going up and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 people. And Peter said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For Judas was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now, this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and, fa yeah, and falling headlong, he burst into the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. This became known to all the residents of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their language, Hakadaldama, Hakaldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written, Peter continued in the book of Psalms, let this brotherhood become desolate, and let there be no one to live in it. And let another take his position of overseer. So, one of the men who have accompanied us throughout the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Thus ends our reading. Young member missionaries, sorry, I wanted to make sure that you were 
the next on our agenda. Young member missionaries, if you want to gather around your computer, your tablet, your telephone, whatever it is you or your parents are using this morning, Pastor Dan has a member for young missionaries, and he'll be taking over now. From here. Hey, good morning, friends. Uh, so glad that you joined us for worship here this morning. Um, if you remember from last week, especially if you were on our Learning Time broadcast after, um, after church, I introduced you to a new friend, a friend that I made a couple weeks ago here at the church, and here's my little friend, right? And, and last week during that Learning Time thing, we had a discussion about what our friend's name should be, because at that point he hadn't told me what his name was. And one of you decided that his name should be Gumdrop. So this is my friend, Gumdrop. And if you are so inclined as a parent, you can start a hashtag saying that Gumdrop is awesome. Because Gumdrop is really awesome. I've been so thankful to have Gum Gumdrop here at church with me the past couple weeks because it gets kind of lonely being here all the time. So Gumdrop and I have had lots of conversations, haven't we, Gumdrop? Yeah, right? Now, he's a man of very few words. Uh, he's, he's still trying to learn how to talk to me so I can understand, but he's very good at nodding his head yes and nodding his head no. And so during the past couple weeks, Gumdrop and I have talked about a lot of things. We've talked about our favorite foods. Uh, my favorite food is chili. Gumdrop's favorite food is asparagus. Isn't that right, Gumdrop? No, he doesn't like asparagus. He really likes brownies, right? Yeah, he, Gumdrop really likes brownies. We've talked about our favorite sports teams. I'm a big Packers fan, and Gumdrop really likes the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, you can tell because of his purple robes and his stars, right? So we've had some of these surface conversations, but Gumdrop and I have also talked about what we imagined we were going to do when we were little kids growing up. Now, Gumdrop told me at first he thought he was going to be a fisherman. Isn't that right, Gumdrop? Yeah. See, he has some fishermen in his family really like the idea of being a fisherman. But after a while, even when he was a young, young wizard, Gumdrop started to grow this big white beard. So then he figured he could be one of Santa's helpers. You know, the helpers that sit in the mall and, and talk to kids about what they want for Christmas. Wasn't that an idea, Gumdrop? Yeah, yeah. But Gumdrop thought that he would never get... Um, jolly enough to be one of those those of those Santa helpers in the mall. So then Gumdrop decided because he had had this white beard and this this white hair that he would be a, a wizard, right? Is that right? Yeah. Gumdrop decided he's going to be a wizard. And as we're talking about all these different things, I asked Gumdrop, well, you know I'm a man of faith, Gumdrop, and you're a man of faith, right? Yeah. And I was like, so how are you going to share the message of Jesus through your magic. And Gumdrop thought about it for a while, and then he went over and he whispered to me in his, in his little, in my, in my ear, and he said, well, Dan, don't you know that as a person of faith, everything that I do is to the glory of God? So when I entertain little kids at a birthday party, or when I'm in the town doing these miraculous things, I do all that for the glory of God. And he encouraged me to share with you today, my little friends, that everything that you do, you do in the glory of God. So as you help a friend with homework, or if you're out uh, playing in the park with someone, or even if you're helping a, a sibling with a, building a Lego project or something like that, every time that you do that, you're bringing glory to God and reminding the world of God's love. So you have an important job, just like Gumdrop does, and just like I do. So so don't ever think that you're not important and what you do isn't important because it absolutely is. So can you say a prayer with me? Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us together. And thank you for new friends like Gumdrop. Keep using us to spread your love in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Gumdrop. You are awesome. He knows he's awesome, right? So next we're going to share the peace. God makes peace within us. Let us claim it. God makes peace between us. Let us share it. The peace of God is here to stay. Thanks be to God. I invite you to share a sign of God's love and peace with one another over this Facebook live stream. You can do the thumbs up, the smiley face emoji, the heart emoji, whatever you want to do.
Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Uh, before I begin this morning, I just want to thank you so much for joining us uh, for online worship here uh, this morning uh, to help spread our reach a little bit about who we are as a congregation and also to let people know how much God loves them. Uh, if you can take a moment and share this live stream on your own Facebook feeds, it will kind of happen and that things kind of spread out and people will see what you're up to and We'd love to have as, as many people on this live stream as possible, just so we can remind them how loved and valuable uh, they are uh, to God and to us as a people of faith. This past week um, has been really, really difficult uh, for me. You know, during the, the course of this pandemic, my, my mood has gone uh, kind of like a roller coaster. I've, I've kind of felt really good and really safe and really comfortable some days, and other days I've been down in the, in the dumps wondering if this is going to ever change. How can I continue being an effective leader of a faith community in the midst of this if, if what we're doing is making a difference at all? And, and, and this week was one of those down weeks. Um, so I had my own stuff going on, but then I I thought about uh, things going on in our country and in the world, and that keep, kept dragging me further and further kind of down this, this little path of despair. And as I was thinking about what I wanted to talk to you about this morning, I was thinking about my week, but also thinking about our Bible text. This is the, really the conclusion to the book of, book of Luke. As, as we move from Jesus' earthly ministry into the ministry uh, that the Spirit uh, kind of ordains Jesus, his first apostles, to, to, to enter in into the world. And I, I thought how much like, how, how similar we are to those uh, apostles at this point in time, right? Our whole world has changed over the course of the past six months. I remember in uh, mid-February, as, as, as life was pretty normal, uh, going to the grocery store and it being packed with people and, and going to different events, going to the movies and, and the movie theater being packed. And, I, and I, I recognize how different life is now. And it very well should be different now. I mean, we are all sheltering in place and staying apart from each other and wearing masks and doing all these things out of love for one another uh, so we can keep one another safe. But it is different and weird and and I don't know if it's ever going to be the same. And the, and the apostles find themselves in the same position, right? Jesus has, has died and risen again. And at the beginning part of our reading today, we hear about Jesus departing the earth again. And things aren't going to be the same for the apostles, right? We get this indication of Jesus saying, I'm going to be leaving. Uh, you're going to be endowed with the gift of the Spirit to continue this work while I'm gone. And then Jesus ascends into heaven. And the apostles are there when this happened, and they witness this, and they keep looking up into the sky. And I've always wondered what they're thinking about. Are they just so awestruck by, by the majesty of this ascension? Are they standing there saying, wow, Jesus, we don't know you as a joker, but hopefully you're coming right back, because we can't do this on our own. Are they wondering if God has left them completely and how they're going to function going forward because they haven't yet been given this gift that Jesus has promised them? Are they thinking that things aren't ever going to be the same and that life is going to be hard and difficult from this point forward? And they find themselves just staring up, immobilized by all these thoughts, these feelings of fear and wonder and all these thoughts. But the story doesn't end there, right? Because as they're gazing upward, messengers from God appear and say, what are you doing? This Jesus who just left said that you're going to continue this ministry in the world. You shouldn't just be looking up into heaven. You should be getting out there and and doing the business, right? You should be getting out there proclaiming this message of love and doing these miraculous healings and bringing all of the world back together again. And I thought how appropriate this message was for me this week and, 
and maybe for you this week, right? That, that in the midst of this, this pandemic, in this midst of how, how life has changed for us, we can be so immobilized by our fear, by our trepidation, all this kind of stuff, that we can forget that we're all called to this holy work, this work of, of sharing God's love and peace in the world. And that maybe, just maybe, we need one of God's messengers to show up in our lives and say, get up, do something, be, be God, be the presence of God in this world. You can figure out how to do this. Be creative, do the work. People still need to hear that they're loved and probably need to hear that more now than any other time. So get about and, and do this business, do this holy business. Now, the story doesn't end there today with the, the apostles, right? Instead, they, they discover that they need un, to add another to their ranks to continue this holy work, right? And they have this, 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 this little history lesson from, from, from Peter, and then, and then they move on to, the, to appoint a, a twelfth apostle. And it just so happens that they bring up two men as possible candidates. They, they bring up this first man, Barsabbas, right, who, who's also known as Justice, who has these multiple names, and, and, and because he has multiple names recorded in Scripture, must be this important person. And then they also lift up this, this follower named Matthias. Now, Scripture says that that God knows what's written on everyone's hearts already. People already know who they want to choose, but they, they step out and they're faithful, and instead they, say, instead they say, God, we know who we want, but we really want to know who you want. So we're going to cast lots. We're going to roll the dice, and whoever, however the dice say is going to be in our ranks. And they do this, and it's Matthias. And I've been thinking about this because I have lots of really well-laid plans in my life. I know where I want to be 10 years from now. I, I thought I knew what we were going to be doing as a congregation uh, at this point six months ago, but none of that is going to be able to come to fruition because of our current circumstances. And maybe, just maybe, this week's reading is a reminder to me and a reminder to you that even though we might think we know what we want to happen, maybe we should be like these apostles and say to God, God, you know what we want, but we want to follow what you want. Tell us what you want. Open our ears to hear you. Open our hearts to the way that you want us to operate in the world. And we'll do that. You see, this, this call story is fascinating to me, right? Because... First, we have this, you need to go out and do something part of the call story. And then you have to say, but the things that you do, you need to make sure that I want you to do them. And when you put those things together, us acting on the will of God, amazing things happen in the world. And could it be that maybe, just maybe, that if we as a community of faith and people of faith become more attuned to the will of God, and doing that will of God in the world, that the world can change. It cannot seem so desperate or in despair as it might seem now. So siblings in Christ, my prayer for us today is that we become doer of God, doers of God's will in the world. Now we might not know what that looks like yet, and that's absolutely fine. But I would ask that the Holy Spirit stir up in us this spirit of discernment, the spirit of willingness to, to listen to what the will of God might be for our lives, and stirring up the strength and courage to do those things in the world. In the face of in, injustice, of political division, of starvation, of, of war, of famine, of responding to natural disasters. My prayer is that we, as people of faith, become doers of the word, that we listen for the will of God, and that we just don't stop at listening, but that we become doers.
So let's engage in this holy work together. Let us walk side by side, hand in hand, to combat all the evils that we see happening in the world. And let us go forward with strength and courage because no, I know that if I'm holding one person's hand with this hand, that God's holding my hand with this hand, saying, I got your back, brother. Go out there, proclaim the good news that God loves you all. And for that, I am grateful. So thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our next song, I Could Sing of Your Love Forever. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, I'm going to talk about our offering. And at the top of this Facebook stream, you see the different ways that you can continue to offer your financial gifts here at People of Hope. Uh, but today I want to offer, I just want to offer a thank you for your non-financial gifts to People of Hope. I want to encourage you to still give financially, of course, so we can continue our mission and ministry. But I thank you for all the ways uh, that you answer God's call to be a community of faith uh, during this time of, of isolation, the, during this time uh, that we're apart. Uh, and I know that you're, you're, you're still figuring out how to be a community of faith by the ways that you are praying for each other and continuing to serve with one another and continue to connect with one another. So thank you uh, for answering God's call 
uh, to maintain our community of faith uh, during this time of separation. There was a really powerful thing that happened this week when I got news that one of our, our dear member missionaries was, was hospitalized and put out a, a prayer request uh, for her and, and was flooded and bombarded with, with, with emails of concern wondering what was going on. So um, thank you for praying for her. Thank you for praying for other member missionaries who are, uh, who are facing um, physical illness and mental illness during this time. And and continue just for being the awesome people that you are. So if you want to start another hashtag, you could say that we are awesome. And that, I know that's kind of braggy, but that's okay. You can, you can brag. It's okay. So uh, um, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the ways that you continue to figure out how to be community uh, during this time of physical distancing. Uh, we're going to continue with the prayers of the people here now. And this is an interactive part of our service. So if you have a prayer request... Go ahead and put that into the comment box here on our Facebook live feed so I can make sure to share that with everyone. Uh, in just a second, we're going to put up the prayer screen so you don't see me scrolling through Facebook to offer those prayers uh, as they come in. Uh, know that after every prayer petition, I will say, Lord, listen to our hearts. I invite you to both respond verbally by saying, hear our prayers, but then also respond by using one of those lovely Facebook emojis that that are down at the bottom of your stream. So I invite you to please pray with me. Most holy and gracious God, I thank you for this day of grace, and I thank you for bringing us here together uh, to experience community, to be a community of faith, uh, to hear your good news, uh, to pray together, to sing with one another, to share in your holy meal. God, it's, it's amazing the ways uh, that you work in this world, and it's amazing the way in which you bring us together. Continue to remind us that we are together in this, even though we might not see each other face to face. Lord, listen to our hearts, hear our prayers. Gracious God, as we continue to enter into this political season in our country, I ask that uh, you uh, stir up in us a spirit of civility, um, a spirit of compassion, a spirit of understanding those whom we might not agree with. God, we pray that your will be done in all things. Lord, listen to our hearts. Hear our prayers. Gracious God, as we gather in this church building and in our homes or in our campers or wherever we might be gathered this morning, we think of those who have nowhere to go, especially as the nights get colder and colder. God, we ask that you continue to use us as a people of faith, to help bring shelter to those who need shelter, provide food for the hungry, to provide drink for the thirsty, and, and to help us provide clothing to the naked. Lord, listen to our hearts. Hear our prayers. Gracious God, we ask for prayers of healing and peace for Marilyn's friend Carol, who was, whose husband was diagnosed with stage 4 melanoma. Please be with Carol and her husband and all those who are providing her husband prayer. I'll hold them in your arms of comfort and peace. Lord, listen to our hearts. Hear our prayers. Uh, gracious God, lift up our spirits. Help those with depression, anxiety, PTSD, and pain. Help teenagers so that they can feel equal to others. Lord, listen to our hearts. Hear our prayers. Gracious God, I ask for your continued prayers of healing for Marlis. Uh, continue to watch over her, keep her, strengthen her, and be with Marlis's family as they per continue to provide her with care and comfort. Lord, listen to our hearts, hear our prayers. And gracious God, I, I pray for my sister Joyce, continue to, to heal her of her ailments as well. Uh, continue to bless her and Larry um, in their life together. Lord, listen to our hearts, hear our prayers. Gracious God, I pray for, for, for pastors, for deacons, for workers, for bishops in, in your church. God, uh, we continue to collectively struggle through this pandemic together, uh, wondering about our ministry and, and how effective we are. God, I ask that you continue to remind those who are called to lead your congregation, your holy Christian church, 
that the work that they are doing is the work that you call them to do, and the work that, that they are doing is valuable and well, well worth it. Lord, listen to our hearts. Hear our prayers. Gracious God, I pray for, for, for the visitors to our tiny food pantry, and I thank you um, for, for this community of faith who has answered the call to help provide uh, food relief to those in the larger Rochester community who are struggling. Lord, listen to our hearts. Hear our prayers. Gracious God, we pray for those who are in challenging relationships. We ask that you, that your will be done through those relationships, that, that patience and understanding and compassion may win over strength and, and arguments. Lord, listen to our hearts. Hear our prayers. Gracious God, we lift our silent prayers to you now. Lord, listen to our hearts, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We are going to continue this morning with our communion liturgy, so if you need to grab your communion elements, uh, feel free to do so. Also, if you're a member missionary who has a desire to share this meal with someone else, don't hesitate to pick up your phone and give that other person a call. Um, you should probably tell them that you're celebrating communion, though, and it's just not a random chat. So um, we continue with our communion liturgy. People of God, people of life, we gather as a holy communion for a meal that has been shared countless times in countless places and in countless ways. The first time this meal was shared, Jesus was gathered around a table with a ragged collection of people, outcasts, betrayers, the power-hungry, the fragile, the lonely, and the lost. The first time the meal was celebrated, Jesus promised that it was for all time, that whenever the bread was broken and the wine was poured, wherever the story was told around a table, he would be there. Today we remember the story as it's been told a thousand times over. We eat the bread and we drink the wine and we affirm that we all belong at this table and that Jesus is here. So if we come to this table angry, let this bread and wine be our peace. If we come to this table betrayed, let this bread and wine be our grace. If we come to the table divided, let this bread and wine be our wholeness. If we come to the table in despair, let this bread and wine be our life. For this is a holy table with food to fill the hungry world and wine to quench thirsty hearts. Thanks be to God. When Jesus ate with friends, he took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, passed it to his friends, saying, Drink, this cup poured out for you and for all people is the promise of God. Whenever you drink it, remember me. We remember Jesus' death and resurrection, our hope and our life. We break the bread and share the one cup. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God given freely by God to all of God's people. So I invite you to partake in the meal now. Remembering that face in 
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you in his grace and in his peace. Amen. Uh, just a few announcements as we conclude our time of worship here this morning. I'm going to come around front here for these. Um, first, don't forget people of hops tonight. Uh, at 4 p.m. we're going to meet outside of the, the church building in the lawn. Uh, for some socially distanced time around a fire. You can bring your own beverage, bring your own chair. Uh, we'll meet for a couple hours. So uh, I'd love for you to come and be a part of that. And then tonight at 6 o'clock, we have our first of two uh, Zoom-based uh, um, strategic planning meetings. Uh, you can find the link for that strategic planning meeting on our church uh, website by clicking the calendar page and it will show up with that little calendar link. You can um, join that meeting and it's going to be about an hour and a half conversation. It's going to help us frame some plans for uh, the church. There's a series of meetings happening this week. Um, so uh, we'd ask member missionaries to participate in one of those meetings if you are able. If you can't make tonight's Zoom meeting, there's another one next Sunday night. So uh, you'll be invited to participate in that process this, that way. On Tuesday of this week at 6.30 p.m., we have our Lutheran World Relief School kit packing event, uh, which is all going to be done socially distanced as well. Um, there is a link in last week's e-news for you to sign up for that event. Um, so if you just scroll down on your Facebook event, Facebook feed and click uh, the e-news for this past week, you can find the link there. We'd love to have you come be a part of that event. We are asking people if if at all possible, to register before you come so we know how to set up our space to make sure there's room for everyone uh, to work. Um, tomorrow night, Monday, we have our first of a series of book studies about immigration uh, in the U.S. You can find more information about that in this past week's e-news, as well as looking for that Zoom link on the calendar page on our People of Hope website. Uh, we continue to do lots of things here. Uh, that website, website is, is now being updated a, a lot more frequently, as, as well as those calendars. So if you're looking for any of those links uh, for those meetings, you can find them there. As a matter of fact, today at 10 a.m., I'll be leading our, uh, one of our first adult forums um, over Zoom. You can find the link for that on our, on our webpage again. So lots of things continue to happen here at People of Hope. There's lots of things planned for later in this month. If you're a ninth grader um, who's preparing to be confirmed uh, this fall, look for an email from me this week talking about some options for that confirmation service. Uh, we're going we're gonna to try to, to gather uh, those confirmands together so they can have that in-person experience, um, very socially distanced, all that kind of stuff. So you can look for some more information about that. And I continue to thank you for being a part of our community of faith. Uh, if you ever have any questions about what's going on, don't hesitate to, to give me a call, send me an email. You can also reach out to the MLT, mlt at peopleofhope.com, and we'll answer any questions that you might have. So that all being said, oh, we are, thank you from my volunteers in the back of the room. Uh, we have finally kind of figured out this technology piece pretty well. So we are going to be looking for some additional volunteers to help come run some technology 
on Sunday mornings. You can uh, look for an announcement about that. You'll be fully trained. Uh, Karen makes it look really, really easy, and she has, has nailed this thing down to a science. Um, but uh, she would like a, my family would like a little break every now and again just to come and worship uh, instead of doing all this volunteer stuff. So we're going to ask for some additional volunteers. Be on the lookout for that. We're also going to be implementing some online hosts for our Facebook um, live streaming stuff. There'll be information in, in the e-news about that. And then thank you to Larry Stacy, uh, our second worship uh, leader volunteer who has, has made their way on to uh, your screens in the past few weeks. We're going to continue to involve people that way as well. So uh, there'll be more information in the e-news that week, this week, about all those different things. So now, that all being said, I invite you to join in seeing our closing song, Shine, Jesus, Shine. And I have to start it, so here we go. So I love it when our learning time coordinators watch uh, church on Sunday mornings because they remind me of the things that I'm supposed to say that I didn't say. So just a quick reminder, our learning time for pre-K through fourth graders uh, is happening today uh, at 10 a.m. too, right here on Facebook. So as, as this live feed kind of ends, you'll see a Facebook premiere video and you'll see one of our learning time teachers presenting uh, today's lesson for our littlest kids. Uh, learning time uh, for five through eight uh, great students happens next Sunday. So now I turn it over to Larry. Receive the blessing. My prayer for you, may you go forth this week and embrace the grace of a God 
who loves you more than you will ever know. May you go forth this week with the peace and the calmness in your heart that's provided by Jesus, your Savior, who loves you more than you will ever know. And may you go forth, stand up if you're able, move around the world filled with the energy of love and peace and hope that's energized within you by the Holy Spirit who loves you so much. In the name of God, the Creator, Jesus, the Savior, and the Holy Spirit, your energizing force, go forth and embrace the grace of God and shine brightly. Go, my friends. Have a great week.